Welcome back to Reliving Retro. This is Season 3, Episode 6. And if you're here for the very first time, we are a retro gaming podcast where we pick one game at random every single week and we play it and get together and review it. And today we're, we are joined by some very special guests and I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Go ahead, Dan. Hi, I'm Dan from the YouTube series Console Wars. <laughs> and I'm Pat. I'm Nintendo from the YouTube series Console Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you guys are not familiar with Console Wars on YouTube, definitely go check them out. Uh, Pat is Nintendo and Dan is Sega and they fight about which uh, version of the game is better. And I love the turtle episode. I think that one is probably my favorite, but I also think it's because turtles in time is one of my favorite games of all time. And, uh, you know, I, I feel very strongly that turtles in time is the better version, but I, I know that there are some gen Genesis truthers out there. So it's always fun to hear those <laughs> arguments. <laughs> I mean, I wrote the script, and I'm the Sega guy, so, and I, I was like, "Yeah, Super <laughs> Nintendo is going to crush this one." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some I mean, of the games you just go in, you know what's going to happen. Yeah one one that I find hard to swallow is the Aladdin one because I played the Super Nintendo one <laughs> all the time as a kid, but the, I mm. think the Sega Genesis one is definitely better. Mm. Yeah, I only you had a, you're a terrible Genesis. childhood. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a Genesis, but I almost I almost exclusively played my Super Nintendo. And uh, Yeiser, unfortunately, you didn't get a chance to really play any games of that era, right? No, no, had zero Sega consoles. Zero Sega consoles, and your mm -hmm. brothers pretty much took all the video games from you, correct? Basically, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Sounds, sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, that, that's the worst childhood. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Yeah, mine was a little Harry the... Potter room under the stairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the oldest. I was the youngest. So, yeah, it's kind of how it goes, you know? I was the older brother, yeah. so I was able to kind of control the video games in the household yeah. but uh let me so first off we're gonna ask you some getting to know you questions and we can start with pat for this one uh what was your introduction to gaming maybe your first console Ooh, i was born into atari um so had the atari and then once the nintendo like the original nintendo came out uh my mom and dad got it and when they weren't playing it i i jumped on it my older brother jumped on it and we were just mario brothers and then sega or uh, sega then uh, zelda then I found my love of Castlevania. Nice. Mm. Yeah, we did Castlevania on the show. It's uh, one of the, my favorite games that we've played on here so far. Yeah. Um, I, I I strongly believe that Castlevania has the best soundtrack of any NES game uh -huh. of the entire I library. I think between that and Zelda, it's such a, it's close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, I can oh, see okay. that on your face. I'm like, something's okay. coming. <laughs> oh, Mega Man. Mega Man. Easily. Any oh, of the Mega Man. Mega guys. Man's um, up there. Any of the Mega Man? Mega Man too, for sure. But any of them? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, okay, one's not that good. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> I, do, I do like two, three is amazing. I even like five. I'll take that yeah. soundtrack. Yeah, three has a really like iconic uh, title screen. Yeah. So, oh, thank you, thank you. I used to just listen to that. <laughs> I used to just yeah. turn it on, and listen to it. Like I could, I was raised Catholic, so I couldn't play video games on Lent. I just put on. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not playing. I'm just gonna listen to the music. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. It's funny. Uh, <laughs> Pat, what are some of your favorite games to play now? Some of your favorite types of games, like genres. Like currently, when I actually I have the time again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll jump on Call of Duty every now and then if I uh, play a few rounds. If I have friends playing, I'll take up a little more time. It becomes a social event. Um, Fallout 4, I was a big fan of. I'll still go back on that every now and then. And at this point, it's just like checking your settlements and see why they're pissy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know what? Honestly, going back to Castlevania, I downloaded the uh, the collection of uh, the, was it the 30th anniversary of it. And oh, yeah. it's like the whole thing and Symphony of the Night is by far one of my favorite games probably ever. So I'm I'm doing probably my third replay of that on an off. Nice. Right now. Cool. Yeah, I can't wait to get to that one. I've actually never played that. Uh, oh, you were in for a treat. Game. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it's a I've heard it's a great one. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, same questions to you. What was your introduction to gaming? My introduction, I was uh not Atari for me. It was Nintendo. Good old NES was my introduction. Mm. Uh, Babysitter's son had it first. So I was like, oh, I want this. And then I remember getting it. And I didn't even know how to like, 
put the game in. I put it in backwards and I didn't know you had to push it down. I did everything <laughs> wrong to get it started. But then, yeah, Super Mario Duck Hunt was the first game. And I would I was the kid that would move the controller up and down as I jumped. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, so it's just NES. And then since, uh, since I was an only child, I had both Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis growing up. Very cool. So, um, yeah. So there was no console wars in my house. It was just all the consoles. I <laughs> yeah, had a CDI that's... growing up. That's how it was for me. I mean, I didn't have a CDI, but that's how it was for <laughs> me too, where I had uh, almost all the Nintendo consoles and you know almost all the mm -hmm. Sega consoles and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, I only ever had the Genesis, but I had all the Nintendos. Oh, yeah. I think you yeah. missed out on the Dreamcast, Same. man. That's a good one. That my was, was, that, was it that or the Saturn that they did the original um, Resident Evil remake on? uh the saturn i believe it was okay i think well i mean i know it came out for the saturn as well i'm not sure if it was like a, a remake on exclusive the, on the Dreamcast right so uh okay. funny dan though uh the the moving the controller up and down it kind of triggered a memory one of my friends uh he used to stand up and he used to actually jump when he would hit oh. the jump button <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah my boy was wild That's um awesome. dan what would you say some of your favorite types of genres uh to play now are right now um lately i've uh, actually kind of going off one of pat's favorite things like i've been playing a lot of metroidvania mm -hmm. games i actually just beat metroid dread um really enjoyed the hell out of that i heard uh, that i heard that's awesome i haven't been yeah, able to play it yet it was really fun i felt like it was a little too easy though i feel like yeah. it's like you know metroidvania you're kind of just like i don't know where to go so you're just like exploring everything like a thousand times you're like oh yeah. i missed that little thing but um, the way dread's set up it's like it's pretty much like holding your hand like you got to go here 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 and you'll be fine so um but i still really enjoyed it um and then i'm also playing currently playing god of war ragnarok I, like the god of war series so nice well, uh, what are your opinions on that i haven't gotten that far uh gotcha. it feels just like <laughs> god of war 4 like yeah like it didn't like i don't know if it's like did anything to like you know progress <laughs> but so far I'm, I'm enjoying it nice cool um all right so this week uh we played space megaforce for the super nintendo and prior experience with this game uh pat have you ever played this game before i've never even heard of this game before oh that really my okay. answer too <laughs> yeah, yeah same i'm with you oh that's funny yeah i mean i had never played it before but i had heard that it's one of the best like shoot 'em ups of all time and definitely um up there in on like the super nintendo console so mm -hmm. i was excited to give it a shot because i'm not really a shoot 'em up guy like there aren't many mm -hmm. shoot 'em ups that i've ever really played i try i remember trying ikaruga once and i'm just like this is too much for me for my brain to handle all at one time and it usually shoot 'em ups are pretty difficult uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so i mean i hadn't played this game at all prior to this week and I, I think we're all on the same page there so mm -hmm. we should get some pretty interesting like fresh takes on it right yeah mm -hmm. um let's see uh Yeiser, roughly how how long did you play this game for this week um about an hour maybe a little longer than an hour yeah yeah I, as long as i could um you know deal with just dying to the first boss over and over again <laughs> yeah because <laughs> yeah. I, I never fucking beat it <laughs> uh yeah dan what about you yeah, between an hour and two, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to beat the first boss. I don't know how because I tried oh, again. Nice. And I was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it the second time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Pat, were you able to play the game? I was not able to play the game, but I did watch a uh, an hour long uh, game playthrough. Nice, cool. Uh, I actually checked out. I actually checked out a playthrough as well because I'm like, what am I doing wrong that I can't get past this boss? And I still couldn't mm -hmm. figure it out. Uh, I played <laughs> it for about an hour, hour and a half. Had the same problem as Yeiser. I could not get past that first boss. Yeah, unfortunately, even watching it, they look like it looked difficult even in the playthrough. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So, so none of us beat the game. That's normally the new question, <laughs> but none of us beat it, which is totally fine. Um, let's start it off with story. Yeiser, you want to kick it off? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, the story's pretty basic um basically just like the big machines come from outer space and what like 20 what did it say 2048 2048 like yeah i think so and then uh you know they make the uh space mega force to try to beat them and uh <laughs> and that's that's pretty much it and you gotta uh you know kill everything he summons to protect itself but um you know pretty pretty basic nothing crazy um it seemed like the japanese version mm-hmm 
um they had like character names and stuff like that yeah it seemed so, like it um, had a lot more to it yeah, i mean i didn't look up like any gameplay from it or anything like that but uh in the couple um websites that i had searched up because i was trying to look for a story essentially yeah same. Mm-hmm. and um i i had seen a couple of comments about the japanese version having character names and stuff like that yeah same so mm-hmm. like i think in our version it probably is a two and a half but because um the uh the japanese version was a little more in depth with like characters that you like, got to know i guess mm-hmm. I, I went with the three here all right um I felt like it was a pretty basic. Um, again, not every single story or not every single game rather needs like some expansive like story to be a good game. Right. Um, however, I I can't necessarily just give it a good uh, score for for a story if, <laughs> if it's just a good game. You know what I mean? So I gave it I gave it a two uh, just because it doesn't to me like it has a story, I suppose, but it's nothing like crazy uh, typical kind of, you know, aliens, whatever come to earth and you have to kill them or whatever it was save the world yeah basically uh pat what'd you give it well uh let's see uh, basically same thing it was like a defend earth from aliens and aside from having a very quick opening mm-hmm. and pretty much one picture and a thumbs up for the closing <laughs> and then credits yeah. roll there's literally no story so i i gave it a one yep totally yeah, totally sense. fair yeah if you didn't look it up there really is nothing in the game yeah yeah mm-hmm. We tried to look up like a like a PDF too of like the manual because uh, we usually do that just because trying to bring ourselves back into the '90s like oh we would have had the manual to read right so right. we try to like re- like we try to look up the manual to see uh, mm-hmm. what it says even the back was, of the box something yeah it was hard mm-hmm. to find a PDF on it so like, we kind of just looked yeah. up uh, like the Wikipedia or whatever kind of like basically briefly mm-hmm. described the story but yeah. uh, Dan what about you yeah uh <laughs> story what story i mean yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah this yeah, is yeah. definitely a game that focused mostly on gameplay i mean the opening cutscene that at least in the american version there's like no dot there's no text no dollar it's just nothing okay pictures yeah just right? double pictures <laughs> yeah uh but like i just like you guys just said um the japanese version has like a more in-depth story like there are characters there's mm-hmm. an alien female co-pilot you have and i, I did actually uh play a little bit of the japanese version too and then like the opening oh, cutscene, you do see both of those characters uh, a little briefly she's an alien but she's pretty much just a girl with green hair right so <laughs> <laughs> this is cool and then like they do have more to their ending but i don't know how to read japanese so there is actual <laughs> yeah, dialogue yeah. but the american version has nothing the japanese version at least gives you something so i was going to give it a zero but because of the japanese version i'll give it a one okay yeah totally fair man um all right, let's move over to the strongest part of the game, right? Let's talk about some gameplay. And uh, Dan, why don't you kick it off in gameplay? Gameplay. So kind of like you said, I'm not really like a big shoot 'em up guy, a uh, big shooter. This is one's like a vertical shooter. But like, right. I actually found myself enjoying this quite a bit. Um, it is crazy chaotic. Like there's just a billion things flying at you. And then yeah. this uh-huh. is kind of one of those games where it's, kind of like a one hit kill but if you if your weapon is powered up enough like it'll take away from that instead of killing you right away so mm-hmm. you can survive after getting hit but most likely you're gonna just die after the one hit so it is it's a little difficult this game um but it's also sort of fair with the checkpoints because every time you died you could you had the option of just like starting at the checkpoint yeah um i don't have much experience with these types of vertical shooters like the only one that I really ever got into was Legendary Wings for the NES way back. Oh, I never in the day. heard of it. Oh, it's a fantastic game for the yeah. NES. Uh, highly, highly recommend that one. Um, mm-hmm. But I found myself enjoying it despite the difficulty. And I think because it allowed me to restart at like checkpoints instead of having to start all the way from the beginning of the stage, I actually got, got mm-hmm. all the way to level four. And I oh, feel like oh, wow. I could have kept going further had I just, you know, more time to invest into it. So I really enjoyed it, um, and I'm going to give it a solid four. Cool. The gameplay. Uh, Very cool. What about you, Yazer? Uh, yeah, I went with four, too. Um, the, it's, this game is crazy intense, like you were saying. Crazy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, there's so much shit going on all at once, like trying to kill you. And like some of your weapons will... like destroy projectiles that are coming at you but yeah. like some don't like and so it's like oh, <laughs> man, it's, it's 
fucking crazy. And there's, there's, <laughs> I honestly, I, I like and hate how like they'll throw in different, like they'll throw in lower level, level, lower level weapons in for you to pick up. There you go. Or like right. mostly try to avoid, right? But like mm -hmm. I got so, f I'm cruising through this level with level eight fucking, uh, scatter bombs and i pick up the level one fucking multi shot and i was like yeah. what the I might as well start over like what the fuck am i doing here but um i thought that was pretty cool and i like difficult games you know as long as they're beatable i mean i didn't right. have enough time to beat this but i, I mean i felt i felt like i could have beaten it so mm -hmm. I, yeah i went with a four two this game's pretty dope yeah uh what about you pap uh, so basically, I looked at it as it's just an upgrade to like you know, arcade classics like Galaga and Space Invaders kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. uh, much faster paced. Um, you say not breaking any new grounds, but it looks like I mean what Dan said and everybody else is pretty much saying the power ups are the key of the game. It's sure. you're not getting anything, but there's so much <clears> happening <throat> on the screen. And I mean, I'm talking like visuals, and then you have you know, enemies coming at you, you have these things coming in from the side, all your different uh, power-ups, and, you know, like Gaster said, you, you'll have something up here, but with so much happening, you you just fly into it. It's just like, well, there you go. Now I'm, now I'm a three. <laughs> now we're yeah. fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> so uh, I, I rated it a three, okay. personally. Um, I was actually a little bit higher. I was, I was surprised that I, that I enjoyed playing the game so much, and I wish that I had a little bit more time Mm -hmm. uh to try and to try and really like power through this game i was i was surprised when i looked up there's 12 levels in this game that's that's oh, wow. quite a bit yeah uh and these levels are fairly long um mm -hmm. it's not sure. like it's not like a mario level by any means where you can you know just get through it in 10 seconds uh these levels are fairly long <laughs> this game reminds me a lot of like ghosts and goblins because it has it has that like sort of like the you want to like avoid weapons sometimes in ghosts and goblins because some weapons mm -hmm. are just awful and then other weapons you need them to get through the game <laughs> uh and also like when you die you kind of go back to the uh beginning but it's also semi uh forgiving in that sense uh i gave it a i gave it a four and a half i was close to giving okay. it a five because of how much oh, i enjoyed shit. it but the reason right. why i didn't give it a five is just because um some of some of it is a little cryptic with like i had no idea for the first half hour i played this game where the hell my health was i still um, don't know yeah <laughs> yeah right I'm, like i was looking at the hud the whole time i'm like what this makes no sense yeah i'm like <laughs> which one's which one's the health i'm like oh it's the bottom right and then i use a bomb yeah. i'm like oh no those are bombs <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so, i'm forgetting about my bombs yeah so i'm like where where is my health and then i had to look up to find out what was like where it was and yeah it's it's your weapon the more you upgrade it uh, the more hits mm -hmm. you can take and i believe it's like when you have level five what is it five or six or higher or something like that you can you can get hit twice before you die yeah because every get... hit takes away four levels of a weapon yeah okay so as long as you're oh. over level four and then yeah you'll be okay to, to, again yeah. it's only we have i only looked that up on wikipedia that's the only <laughs> yeah. way i know that yeah <laughs> yeah exactly because the game doesn't explain any of that no. to you no, no none no. of it there's no tutorial nothing, nothing. like that um I'm assuming. Did you guys play the standard mode or the the short mode? Yeah, standard mode. That's what standard. I what I watched was standard. Yeah, yeah. I w I played standard on my own, and then guys, when you came over last week, we were playing a little bit of the a bit of the quick one. The quick one, and the quick one was pretty fun. It's kind of like a high score uh, type of situation where you just uh, you just want to rack up as many points as you can for as long as you can survive. It's not really a get through the level type of deal, but uh, yeah. that one's pretty fun too. Um. Did you guys have a favorite power up? Because my favorite was probably the uh, missiles. Either missiles or scatter bombs. One one of those two. I like them both. Yeah. I think I like the the spray shot that was just like seventy shots going in all these different directions. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like the one that you can control the direction of it because like I hated oh, that one. Yeah, because so you would hard. it's like you could shoot to the side, but then I start going over to the thing that I'm gonna hit it now. I don't want to <laughs> right. I don't I don't like that yeah. one. That was yeah. my yeah. The one that favorite. shot out everywhere it would like curve in and get into like the little crevices. Oh yeah 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 the missiles uh, would do that yeah the missiles mm -hmm. were really good like the heat seeking missiles yeah, essentially like uh i also kind of like the circle ones they would kind of just the circles was yeah good. around yeah. you the yep. yeah 
Yeah, those were good. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought the laser was pretty effective too, because it would go through enemies too. So it would like affect enemies behind enemies. So I like that one. It looked like for one of the later levels you were fighting the boss from the first one again. And they yeah. had the the thing that's going around you, and like you just get right up to it, and that thing is just beating the hell out of it while you're just oh. shooting it in the face. Yeah, yeah, super nice. effective. I um mm -hmm. the the lasers I thought were really cool too because you could shoot them and they would travel up the sides of the level and kind of get out all those like side gunners that are yeah, super annoying. That was really cool. I wouldn't just shoot straight; we go to the side first, then go forward. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, so yeah. so you know exactly what Pat was saying. Like this game is you know 100 percent dependent on how you use the weapons and in upgrading them and stuff like that so uh just just because of how many weapons there are and the you know how uh how different i guess they all are and how you mm -hmm. can just pick them up um it, it's cool too because aren't there some um aren't there some like orbs where you see like you'll see like oh level five missiles and but then it'll change to like level two and you have to try and get it at the right yeah. time yeah. because it's constantly yep. changing mm -hmm. I think that that's kind of a cool mechanic too, because it's like, oh, do you try and get it? Is it worth it? Is it not? Yeah, worth it? it reminds me of uh, Adventures of Batman and Robin on Sega Genesis, where you try mm -hmm. to get a power up, but it would change colors, and you would just, I got to get that yep. color so my oh, power shit. weapon can power up. I, I was gonna say it's like Mario Kart with that one question that just kept flipping and flipping and flipping, and you didn't know what you were gonna get. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Uh, so, go. so pretty good scores here for uh, gameplay as far yeah. as gameplay. As Solid as game for sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, Pat, do you want to start off? visuals for us yes uh so this is uh, my favorite part of the game this was probably my highest score okay uh i thought the layering of the game was amazing you could actually like you know you could see the ground you can see everything that's below you and then you can see you're above everything but on the ground you have moving water you've got moving trees like swaying in the breeze um it was just I incredible and then even the further uh that you got into the game just these ridiculous like all the the snaking backgrounds and everything like it for mm -hmm. being a game from 1992. Wow. Like it just graphics were amazing. Mm -hmm. The color usage. Uh, yeah. But the giving it the depth I thought was impressive. So I gave it a five across the board. Very nice. nice. Yeah. Very nice. Um, I was also super in impressed with the visuals. Uh, mode seven definitely showed out really yeah. well mm -hmm. in this one. Full, yep. full force, man. <laughs> yeah. I thought it looked great. Um, for everything that patches said, uh, I gave it a, I I gave it a four point five. Uh, I I couldn't quite get to the five because I feel like, uh, I don't know. To me, it still didn't impress me as much as games like Donkey Kong Country, but it still was like it was Fair. still amazing. Mm -hmm. um, Without the rare engine, I mean that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't blame anybody at all for giving it a five here because I I was pretty close to doing it. So, uh, what about you, Dan? Uh, yeah, uh, just blown away by the visuals, kind of like Pat said, like this game came out in 1992. What? Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and then I couldn't <laughs> believe how amazing it was. Also, we didn't mention published by Toho, the uh, studio that brought us Godzilla. So that's, yeah, that's <laughs> oh, like, shit. where did that? I didn't know they made video games, too. That's pretty freaking <laughs> cool. So um, yeah, I was just really blown away by the visuals and like, not necessarily like the enemies, like a lot of the enemies were pretty generic and pretty tiny. Some were big, mostly the mm -hmm. bosses were like your big over the top visual, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but yeah. the backgrounds, like you said, uh, the mode seven stuff going on in the background, that second level where you just have the space station in the background constantly and it's you mm -hmm. keep going towards it and it keeps going away from you. I mean, that that was just incredible that to have that like going on the entire time with all the enemies going on and really like right. no minimal slowdown. slowdown. Yeah. Yep. It's just really incredible what they were able to achieve in 1992. So many yeah. games that came out after that looked like garbage compared to yeah. this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so many. I was incredibly impressed. The parallax scrolling made certain backgrounds look 3D. It was really well done. And I can't believe I'd mm -hmm. never heard of this game until <laughs> yep. I Exactly it. how I felt playing it. It was, just, so, like, it was yeah. that good and never heard of it. Yeah. So, um, uh, but like you said, like I wasn't, um, you know, with like Donkey Kong Country, like, you know, some of the enemies, like I said, are a little bit generic and really tiny. So it's like, I'll give it a 4.5. A solid 4.5. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, what about you guys? Here? Yeah, I'm right there too at a four and a half. Um, so like, basically like, like I mean, like you guys are saying, three of you already said it, but I'll say it too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the backgrounds mostly, the backgrounds are fucking beautiful. Um, the sprites were a, a little generic, but, you know, still pretty cool. I think the coolest part was how different all of your 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 weapon upgrades were like yep even from like your level seven scatter bombs to your level eight 
scatter bombs. They looked like completely different and like it was really cool. But like again, if you're gonna compare it to Donkey Kong, there wasn't that like <laughs> crazy like in depth like color, like just popping color like that. So I, I couldn't mm-hmm. give it a five, but I think four and a half is this game was it was pretty dope, like you guys were saying. Yeah, I think it was amazing. Um why don't we move over to uh sound here and Dan, you can start us off with sound if you'd like. Yeah. So um First thing I'm going to say about the sound is just some of the clearest voiceovers I've ever heard in a video game. Like <laughs> yeah, even right. just like when you turn it on, it's just like, whoa, <laughs> that is yeah. so freaking crisp. And yeah. every time you got a power up, it would just announce it in just like the clearest tone. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you know, I guess as I play Genesis, it's not that clear on Genesis <laughs> games. So it's very crisp and clear on the Super Nintendo. And then going to the music, it's a pretty solid soundtrack. Um, you know, it's not like, too like intense you know it's it's pretty upbeat you know it's had a pretty like strong beat but it like yeah it was a little more laid back than i i guess like i anticipated just for this type of shooter especially with like the craziness going on kind of reminded me of like some of the calmer stages of like streets of rage or even like some of the later mega man x games just like i was yeah. like like this soundtrack would be perfect for like a mega man x game because it, it kind of just, reminded like, me sorry to uh, interrupt it kind of reminded me a little bit of like a puzzle uh games like soundtrack i don't know why i got okay. that from some of the from some of the uh tracks but um i i thought that they were still pretty good sorry you can continue yeah that's cool <laughs> that's cool so <laughs> yeah um pretty tight soundtrack like i was like really listening to it though like would i like i'm a big dork like sometimes i just listen to video game music oh sam just, like video game yeah. music like is there anything like on here that i would like really like listen to like it's it's good and it really works with what you're doing on screen but like overall it's, it's just not necessarily my jam but i still mm-hmm. think it really works with the game so i'm still gonna give it like a pretty high score i'm gonna give it a four because i think it's okay. really good but it's not you know like the best uh, I, I wasn't like blown away by any single like song on any level i should say makes sense right. uh yeah i'll uh i'll interject here yeah i i 100 agree uh, almost everything you said uh i have a four as well um there isn't anything here i actually do have a video game like um playlist on my on my spotify so it's mm-hmm. like you know basically the test is like would i add anything from this game right. to that playlist yep. <laughs> and the answer was the answer unfortunately was no for me that doesn't mm-hmm. say that i dislike the music in any way however i felt like the sound effects were really good um just like you know enemies exploding all that stuff the shooting uh the shooting wasn't annoying which is great because it's just constant um mm-hmm. so it never annoyed me the sound of it and um yeah the voiceover uh reminded me i don't know why but it just gave me those halo vibes and i enjoy that <laughs> so much like the double kill or whatever uh whenever you picked up an item you know um mm-hmm. or whenever you picked up a new weapon or whatever you would hear him say whatever the weapon was so uh, i thought that that was pretty cool yeah so I, I landed on a four um because of those uh you know those those extra things other than just the soundtrack i think if we were just grading soundtrack here i'd probably land on three or so but yeah but yeah mm-hmm. but because of those other things i gave it a four geyser you know, I didn't realize how much he did sound like that Halo guy, but yeah, he, <laughs> now that he, that, he kinda he kinda does. But yeah, dude, I'm right in the oops, same ballpark as you guys, right? Right as right in the four. Nice. We're all we're all talking about the same stuff here, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean if I got further in the game, maybe uh, so I didn't get to hear like too much of the music because you know, didn't get past level one other than <laughs> like in the quick mode I got, you know, almost all the way through level two, but uh you know, from what I heard, I mean, the music was cool and definitely the voiceover and everything else was, yeah, it was pretty sick. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Uh, what about you, Pat? Uh, I think I'm pretty much in the same ballpark. Uh, first things, I, first games that came to mind that I wrote down with the music, especially early on, was I got a little bit of the Street Fighter vibe, but less muffled, like the the voiceover. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And then the music gave me a little bit of Pilot Wings and Sim City. Yeah, I can oh, see okay, that. Okay. Kind of like, just like that, very <laughs> calm. It's like, what am I getting into yeah. here? And it's just like, pew, 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 everything. But it's just still like, ba, ba, da, ba. yeah, very <laughs> relaxing, <laughs> kill everything music. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then as far as like the sound effects, I, for as much as is going on on the screen, there is a sound effect for everything that happens, which is impressive. And there, again, no slowdown, yeah. nothing like it doesn't get like muffled. Um, I would say some of the explosions were a little muffled and crunchy. 
but you mm-hmm. just kind of you get used to it. it but it's it never gets really annoying it just kind of i feel like if it was any louder or more pronounced then it would get annoying for well, definitely you know, yeah exactly. super annoying yeah wanted to <laughs> um but yeah with that being said i also gave it a four nice i i Four's all it, around. it's funny when you said crunchy because um I was going to mention that I thought a lot of the sound effects in this game kind of sounded Sega Genesis. Yep, that's exactly. And, uh, yep, thought the yeah, same thing. And crunchy, I feel like, is like the perfect way to like, per, like crunchy, gritty is kind of like the Sega Genesis like vibe, right? Trademark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought that crunchy was a really good way to describe the sounds there. Um, mm-hmm. I'll kick it off for aged. Um, I think this game aged amazing. Uh, from the visuals to the gameplay still being like so accessible just pick it up and play uh the, again like what we we're just saying with the sound i think the sound is is very very good um really i think what kind of kills it for for how well it aged is the visuals um i gave it a five just because i felt like for a game from 1992 this game aged amazing like i i wouldn't be that surprised if you told me that this was an indie game like released recently oh yeah mm-hmm. um yeah so yeah, yeah I, was so, think, I was thinking the same thing yeah same yeah. exactly uh, yep yeah so i i gave it a five uh what about you dan uh i held it in high regards too i didn't quite give it a five i gave it a 4.5 cool. because it, it but it's like it was an incredible game like maybe if i got to play the entire thing it, it would change to a five but like you know because i wasn't able to get too far but still it's just i couldn't believe i'd never even heard of this game <laughs> like, it was just it's just everything like worked so well with this game i didn't mm-hmm. i couldn't i really didn't expect myself to like it because i was like oh it's gonna be a really difficult shooter and i suck at those things but yeah it, it they work it in a way which is really accessible to people that aren't really good at it like me so like i said like it's a really forgiving checkpoint system that they kind of incorporated into the game sure mm-hmm. it's, you might hit a wall with a certain bosses or something but you mm-hmm. know if you keep going at it you'll eventually overcome so i think like i told you before we started like i wanted to like buy this game for super nintendo mm-hmm. yeah. and then, wow that price tag <laughs> yeah, of, like yeah. a few hundred dollars just for one copy. <laughs> was it really no, yeah oh, it's yeah. super wow. expensive this game okay. yeah you're not gonna find it cheap anywhere so um <laughs> i really enjoyed it um i definitely think i'm gonna keep playing it after this too so um like it's not my favorite genre but i think it's really solid so easily at 4.5 yeah yeah uh what about you pat um i'm pretty much on the same page as at uh my notes where graphics are pretty damn good especially considering it came out in 92 Uh, i'd say the graphics music and gameplay since it's such a recycled platform have held up and uh actually is uh the game is more superior to some of the other games or uh better known games so i gave it a 4.5 Cool. I, I think exactly what uh, you said. It, it could definitely be uh, like an indie game mm-hmm. somebody released now. I think it looks fantastic and could definitely see that playing on a large screen and like Xbox controller in hand. Right. <laughs> definitely. What about you, Yazer? Um, I, I'm at a four here um, okay. because as much fun as I had with this game, I, I mean, my brain was immediately comparing it to a game we played way earlier in the series, uh, Wild Guns. Is that the same genre? It's, but it's pretty similar. Yeah, because right? Wild Guns is a gallery shooter, I guess. So you're kind of you're not standing still, but you have one screen to right. shoot at. Not, you know, the screen isn't moving, but you can kind of move back and move forth in your screen. And yeah, yeah you gotta you gotta dodge all the shit. It's, it's it's pretty similar. But I I mean, if I gave that game a four and a half, I couldn't give this game a four and a half. So I gave mm-hmm. Space Mega Force a flat four, and it, it's still it's still it's awesome. Like you guys are saying, it it really. You know, it doesn't even really feel like an old game, but no. yeah, no, I mean, I, I 100% agree. Yeah, um, I would love a re release of this, like with yeah. the like Japanese story. It's like, mm-hmm. let's just, oh, fuck yeah, you know, let's just, yeah, let's just bring that over and then I'll totally mm-hmm. buy that. Yeah, Absolutely. that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Or they, they could even like release like an Alest uh collection or something like yeah. that with all the games in, in yeah. it. Um, there you go. right, I think that would be pretty sick too. Uh, is, is there anything else you guys want to add? I think we pretty much covered it right yeah we got it um it. all right total scores for this game uh turns out pat was the lowest at a 3.5 dan <laughs> came in next at a 3.6 yeiser was at a 3.9 and i was surprisingly a four i did not think i was going to give it that high with a two story i did not think yeah. I, would, I would get that well, high oh it's the story yeah yeah My run for the stories really put me down there yeah, yeah. i mean because because if you take the story out of it and you and i just uh average out the other four uh mm-hmm. 
Pat, you're at a 4.12 and, uh, and Dan, you are at a 4.25. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. really good scores for this game. It's just, you yeah. know, the, the story aspect the of story it kind of kills just, the score. The story murdered it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It mm-hmm. kind of, we've had games like that, right? Where like, um, games like a uh, crazy taxi or whatever right like it's a really fun game but uh-huh. it doesn't have a story you know what i mean so like what are <laughs> you gonna do nothing. you gotta give it like a one or something because you don't want right. to kill it right because it doesn't yeah. have a story it doesn't need a story yeah exactly it, it wasn't made for the story right like a uh-huh. lot of modern games are made for the story and then gameplay yeah. is secondary i feel like and then this one's yeah, yeah. exact opposite like who gives a fuck what the story is <laughs> right like, yeah. it's awesome so you're, you're playing it's a home <laughs> arcade game just do 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 yeah, right. yeah, one hundred percent. Now, as far as uh, shmups go, uh, you guys said that you weren't really uh, too well versed in in shoot 'em ups. Yeah, not too much. Entirely. Not no, really. that was. I was always more of like a side scroller kind of. Yeah, uh, I think the I think the only other Super Nintendo uh, shoot 'em up I've ever played was UN Squadron. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that one out, but that one is uh, horizontal. It's a horizontal shooter, so you move like up and down okay. and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh that makes okay. yeah so it's a it's still kind of like completely different but um i had a lot more fun with this game than i did with un squadron when i played that uh so i guess one more question we normally ask is uh would you recommend this to somebody who's never played it before obviously price tag aside right uh <laughs> car only for this game right now is averaging out to 300 bucks <laughs> yeah if you Man. want just the cart so uh you know price tag <laughs> aside if, if they could get their hands on a copy for you know a few bucks or whatever uh would you recommend that they play it uh we can start with pat first hundred percent. Like I said, it's a like I never heard of it and blew me away for what it was for being such a slept on game. Yeah. Uh, again, it looks amazing. It'll kill some time. You'll get mad. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? If you get past it, nothing about it. it like it even looks like it's, you know, it's quantity. Like you, you're not going to beat this game in a day. Right. Or like uh, in a few hours. Yeah. And it, it was a little misleading because I, um, I kind of live off of this site. It's called uh, how long to beat.com and you kind of just look up you can type in any game you want and um tons of people have gone on to submit their times for how long it took them to beat a game so i looked this one up and it said like the average time was about two hours and i'm like oh that's not bad i'll just carve out a couple hours for one <laughs> one day and i'm like i didn't even get past the first box so i found out there was 12 <laughs> levels i'm like yeah that's a little misleading how long to die on the first boss yeah two hours <laughs> okay cool <laughs> roughly <laughs> um i would definitely recommend uh that somebody goes out and and again i'm not saying go out there and emulate but you know if you have to you have to and just figure it out and play the game because it's a it's a really fun game even if you're even if you're not into shoot 'em ups i never really have been uh it was very accessible for somebody like me who is not very inexperienced with the genre so <laughs> Uh, right. Definitely go out there, pick it up, and and try to play it. Yeah, hundred percent. I'll I'll be the one to say emulate it because you know, gonna, who the <laughs> yeah. fuck's gonna spend three hundred dollars? Yeah, go exactly. ahead and emulate it. Play it on your phone. Get a Razer Kishi for forty bucks on on eBay. Yeah, right. Play games on your phone. Yeah, that thing yeah. is pretty sick. Uh, Dan, love it. Of course. I mean, <laughs> this game is amazing. I I'm just I was just blown away. Even if you don't think you're gonna be good at, just play it because you're gonna. It's pretty. It's a pretty game and. and <laughs> You're you're gonna you're gonna have fun. I, I I just think it's I was blown away by how much I enjoyed playing it. it yeah, was, it was a really fun game. It's funny because uh, just over the weekend uh, while I was playing this game, I saw a video kind of making fun of '90s kids how they could kind of just get lost like staring at something for so long and it showed like you know how you would put like music on your computer and it has like all like the sound waves and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and uh you know the maze on the computers at school all the the pipe uh screensavers and stuff like that playing this game kind of reminded me of that like i kind of couldn't stop watching it because of how pretty it looked the entire time (laughs) Mm -hmm. just all like the explosions and i don't know it looked really nice i liked it i had a good time with it Mm. um but all right so this is the part of the show where we randomize what we're going to be playing next and i like to give a very vague description to see if our guests can guess what the game is Uh um now right after that i'm going to ask you guys uh for a game recommendation for us to add to our master list so i'm just prepping you now so you have a couple minutes to think about it um anything we consider retro is anything before the ps3 xbox 360 and wii generation so ps2 and older 
Um, but yeah, so we're going to hit that randomizer and see what we're playing next week. Ready? Yeah, send it. That was one of the weeks where it felt like longer. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it feels only like it's like four seconds, and other times it feels like it's 14. Yeah, a while. Towards the end, it was getting a little close encounter y. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, we have a game developed and published by Nintendo, uh -huh. released in 1990. We have a side scrolling platformer for this for the NES. Is that, is that the only hint? <laughs> that's 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 all you got. I, oh, I can God. give you a couple more. Okay. Composed by Koji Kondo. Okay. <laughs> Designed by Shigeru Miyamoto. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds like it's a popular game. Perhaps. Yeah. Pretty, it's a pretty popular <laughs> one. The Adventures of Link. It is Super Mario Brothers Three. Ah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a pretty big one. It, it's yeah. kind of tough with those hints because it's like how many games were published and developed by Nintendo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, quite a bit. It so. was going to be I I was between Mario and Zelda. Yeah. And I'm exactly. trying to think of like the 1990 of like where are we at? Yeah, right. Um yeah, so Super Mario Brothers 3, um I'm pretty excited for that one. Our guest for that show will be uh Metroid Mike. He recently just he recently just built an entire Mario game on Super Mario Maker 2. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy. He has like over 50,000 uh, downloads and plays on that. And he's had nice. over uh, 5,000 people beat the game and tons of people were streaming it. And it's it's a pretty crazy accomplishment. I think he had uh, 40 levels made. It's 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 pretty yeah. amazing. Okay. Yeah, it's eight, eight worlds. Yeah, five, eight, five. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something, something yeah. Like that. It's wild. Uh, so we'll be interested in talking to him about Super Mario Brothers 3. And uh, if you guys want to um, let us know what your recommendations would be for our master list, uh, are you guys ready to do that? Yeah, what do you got? You got something, Pat? <laughs> uh, as I mentioned earlier, and you said you haven't played it, uh, it was, I believe, a PS1 game, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That's good. Oh shit. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's a good one. I'm gonna follow up. You can't have it. One. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm looking at my like PlayStation. I can only see my PlayStation 2 games from here. Um uh did you ever play Katamari Damasi? No, I haven't. Well, well there you go. Oh, highly <laughs> recommended. The first Katamari Damachi for PlayStation 2. Highly okay. recommend it. Super I like weird games. This is one of those weird games that makes you use both analog sticks, kind of like Super uh, Ape Escape, not Super Monkey. Yeah, Ape Escape, you got to use the both analog sticks to kind of move this ball, which will mm -hmm. collect things because you're trying to make stars because your drunk celestial father destroyed all the stars and planets. <laughs> so oh, five, five, five for story. Five for story. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it, is, it, it is weird as Shook shit. Cord, it, huh? The soundtrack, you want to talk about <laughs> Fantastic soundtracks, amazing soundtracks, silly graphics. It is one of those weird games that is oddly addictive. Highly recommend Katamari Damashi for PlayStation 2. I kind of I feel like I've played a demo of this game. Do you you roll around and you just you collect like junk, right? Yeah, you just collect junk, and then like the bigger you get, the bigger the objects you can get. So eventually you'll be able to collect like houses and islands and huge hmm. pieces of land. It's it's pretty crazy and fun at the same time. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I got to check out some footage of that because when you were saying it, I'm like, I feel like I've played a demo of this game, but it, <laughs> sound, it sounds pretty fun. And yeah, I uh, recommend Lonely Rolling Stars, the the song that I love the best. Lonely Rolling Stars. <laughs> yeah. I know the track name. Yeah. Right? Oh, you, yeah. I love that soundtrack. <laughs> that's and, awesome. And of course, I'm, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm definitely excited to try out Symphony of the Night because uh, being a pretty big okay. Castlevania fan, and not right. having played that one yet, um, I'm kind of a little ashamed of myself. Like, yeah, I should, man. I should yeah. get there. You should be. You should be. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My favorite Castlevania the music is just. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> just, just my just, my favorite just, Castlevania yeah. so far is Super Castlevania Four. Um, mm. I'm not sure how you guys. W what's your favorite Castlevania? Is it is it Symphony of the Night? Because Four is pretty probably good. honestly, it's a toss up between that or uh, Two. 
Oh yeah, two. Oh, no, I'm sorry, three. Was it Dracula's Curse? Was that three? Yeah, yeah, that was three. Yeah, three. Simon's Quest was two. I was Simon's gonna say Quest Simon's two. Quest both is there, usually the one that everybody good, hates. But, yeah, but the music is fantastic. The music is great. <laughs> both, but the difference so between good. In controls from one to two. Bloody is a tears. World, uh, like Ooh. the jumping, bloody tears. Yeah, all of it. But sure. uh, trying to jump it forward in the first one is just like, and yeah. then by the time the second <laughs> one came around, control wise, like you could at least move your, like you were agile. Right. I think that's why I'm such a big fan of Castlevania Four because of like the eight way whipping and like moving. Yeah, no, nah, Four was fantastic too. Yeah. Uh, what was there was Bloodlines, and then what was the other? There was a uh, uh, Super yeah, Castlevania. Dra- I was gonna say Dracula X. There's yeah. That one too. Okay. But was but the then there's like, like Rondo of your staff too, right? Rondo of Blood. Yeah, Rondo of Blood also. Yeah, Rondo of Blood. Yep. Um. All right. So if you guys want to just tell the people one last time where they can find you. You can find us on YouTube. You just look up Console Wars, and hopefully you see a logo that incorporates the Nintendo and Sega logos. Not a logo which, stolen from CBS. <laughs> yep. I was going to say, which may or may not have been stolen. Yeah. Which may or may they not have stolen. They may or may not have stolen our logo. for their... Did you ever get in contact yeah, with them about that? No, because I'm, I'm terrified. I can't. Can you imagine us going against CBS? So they'd be like, "No, it's our logo." Yeah. For, right? Yeah. Not to so, mention, it's hard to uh, your totally steal uh, a font. Yeah, that exactly. Somebody else's to begin with. It's like we have this thing that we made off this other thing that you took from our thing that we made from that thing. How dare yeah, right? you? I'm surprised <laughs> Nintendo didn't shut them down. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> They're like, you incorporated a red oval in your logo. Yeah. We have to, uh... <laughs> yep. Not on my watch. <laughs> That's a copyright claim. Um, it's funny though, because. Yeah. Greg made the logo, right? And um, in our logo, the L goes a little bit outside the circle. Yeah. But in their logo, it's smaller. So Greg's like, oh, I should have done that for their logo. I'm like, shut up. They stole the logo. We don't <laughs> yeah. defend yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah, no, yours is better. Yours is definitely better. Uh, yeah. I, saw, I saw people like tweeting at you guys saying like, yo, um, they may or may not have stole your logo, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys see that on your own or were you uh, – did somebody – bring it to your no, attention and like a, a bunch of people kept like yo somebody stole your logo so many <laughs> you're like do you guys have a special yeah. coming out i was like I, I yeah really so many people yeah so many people like hey i can't wait to watch your special on cbs like that's not us that's not yeah. us. <laughs> we made it big no we did not no. <laughs> that's crazy that they i mean they had to have done some i mean I, w- I was gonna say they would have had to have done some research right but we've seen like a you know pretty recently that a, a cleveland team had changed their name and i guess it had belong to like some roller derby team and then there was some legal battle about that the cleveland guardians i don't know if you guys uh mm-hmm. into the baseball like that but yeah so um thank you guys so much for coming on yeah. really really appreciate it uh hope to yeah. uh, hope to have you guys uh back on at some point but um for everyone else check us out next week as we play super mario brothers 3 with metroid mike it's going to be a lot of fun yeah. and uh nice. take care everybody peace Bye-bye. later